Welcome back to the JLL Coaching Pod. Hope you're having a good day. Why did I start lifting? Why did I do it? Big question. And like thinking back, honestly, I think it was just like girls, confidence, like wanting to be more confident, not less. Ego. And just like, oh yeah, I didn't want to, I just wanted to be stronger. I wanted to be a bigger, stronger guy. I did want to get better at sports, like I played hockey to a reasonable level and I wanted to get better at it and I thought getting stronger and lifting weights would do that. I think because I often would just like when you're young, you idealize someone who's got more muscle on their body as being a better athlete. So I was like, all right, maybe I should lift weights, start doing it in the room and that's the start of why I started to lift. Those are, I think they're pretty typical. I don't know anyone who really lifts for any other reason than those. I'm sure you can think of some, but typically you start just uh, wanting to look better and then it develops into an addiction and 13 years later, you're like a personal trainer. It's your entire identity and that's that's the world now. But why do I lift now is a completely different question. Like The whole focus of this podcast is going to talk, be talking about why I started lifting, um, how I started lifting and a better way to start a lifting journey now if I like when I've got clients or things like that and we go through this process how it's just so superior to what I was doing back then I think everyone who just starts in the gym who tries to look a bit better you'll either like go on the be this person who goes on this cardio equipment for 10-15 minutes and just walks or does the bike or stair bar stuff or even an hour and really, it's not that effective. You're not going to really change that much. Maybe you can form a good habit over time. But in terms of quick results aesthetically, unless your diet's changed massively, you're not going to look that good. And that's boys and girls. Like everyone, men and women, everyone is doing that. Or the other option is typically a guy will go upstairs or downstairs, wherever the gym is, wherever the weights are. I'm thinking of my gym, but go to the weight section do some bicep curls, do a couple of lat pull-down machines, maybe the chest press machine, maybe some dumbbell bench press, maybe a barbell bench press, or some terrible squats, and yeah, miss a lot of the key factors that I've talked about to actually create some adaptations, to actually create some change. So before we dive into that, about like how I would go about this process, if you're new, if you're just getting into the gym, how to make it, or even if you're not new, but you've, the results you're getting, you're not happy with, how to improve those. We will dive into that. But I want to just talk about and think about why do I lift now? Because I'm already satisfied with my strength, 100%. Like I don't need to get any stronger anymore. I don't think that's going to add much to my life. Um, I don't think I need to build more muscle anywhere, really. Um, maybe like a a few millimeters here and there tidy things up a little bit but I'm very satisfied with where the physique's at where the performance is at with regards to like weight training um things can always get better and I will keep chipping away no matter what um but I'm not in a rush to make any strength strength um adaptations or hypertrophy adaptations I'm more interested in other areas of performance getting faster becoming more bouncy and just being a generally good more robust anti-fragile athlete being able to go out on a run for a marathon at the drop of a coin drop of a whatever or being able to play tennis paddle tennis in particular for hours on end without any issues being quick off the mark also being able to jump in with someone who's doing a good hard workout in the gym some crossfit style stuff like i want to be able to do it all that's why i'm lifting now becoming more robust that's why i'm training now I should say, and a lot of things carry over to that. But if I'm just starting out in the gym and I'm just starting on my training journey, typically you're looking to just kind of look a little bit better, maybe feel a bit stronger, um, change the kind of lifestyle that you're living. And the most important thing, and I think I, I would say I tick this box well, make it fun. If you're starting out a lifting journey, it's got to be fun. It's got to be enjoyable. And that can be different to different people. Some people like a very structured approach where they're measuring everything and they're kind of dialing it all in and people get satisfaction from that level of control and 
detail. Others will be a little bit more laid back and they want a bit of randomness or they don't want to think about it too much and they just want to show up and get it done. So making it fun is absolutely essential when you're starting out with your training. Um, A big thing for me was then back in the days was following people that I enjoyed to watch and learning from them about like how they train, how they get better in the gym, how they got good results over time. And that was part of the enjoyment process having people to look up to the so, like yeah the social environment be it the online world that you're in a mix with is so important if you're going out there alone like a lone wolf without any information you're going to leave so much on the table and you'll miss out on gains enjoyment it's unlikely you'll continue for the long term that's why a lot of people like a lot of the reasons that people mess up training at the start is also the reason why a lot of people would get a coach or a personal trainer because you just tick a thousand boxes and you don't need to think too hard. It's just like, yep, take my money, let's sign up. You do the thinking for me. I just want to show up, get good results and have fun along the way. Um, it's it's an amazing way to do it. But then again, even if you do that, you want to get a coach, PT, whatever, you still want to build your own circle of fun around it because you've got to go independent you've got to do sessions by yourself things like that you don't have to but it's probably better if you do for yourself and just for across the board in general it's nice to get cracking by yourself um i would also choose things that lead to good results and easy wins so i'm going to talk about later in this pod all the different movement patterns that you can go through with your body and when you're cho- and I'm talking about things like a squat, a deadlift, or a hinge, a pushing, a pulling, these kinds of things. I'm going to go into a bit more depth later. But choosing exercises that will yield a lot without, well, you're a noob. You've never really lifted before. So you want to choose exercises that you get a lot from. And I would really, really bias people to just choose machines. They are set up so easily. There's a diagram to tell you what to do. If you don't want to go on YouTube every exercise and be like, how do I do this? There's a literally a diagram. It's hard to do wrong. It's hard to hurt yourself. And if you just push hard for a couple of sets on each exercise, you can probably progress week to week for a significant period of time. A lot of factors will vary in terms of how quickly you can progress. But just starting somewhere on a machine and doing a two to four sets that are challenging, they have to be challenging for you to get good results. That will lead to just a great like snowball effect of momentum. If you have a bias to not using machines because you want to go and use kind of dumbbells or free weights, that's a different story entirely. My dog's walking through. I don't know if I need to let her out. She might need to pee, but we'll continue. And if she's, uh, yeah, she's good. She's good. All things are good. Um, so if you have a bias for against machines and you want to do dumbbells or barbells just because that's who your favorite influence is kind of doing, there's a higher entry to barry, <laughs> entry, barrier to entry. Jesus, that was bad. There's a higher barrier to entry with regards to those exercises these exercises with free weights every and everything's not a machine you have to learn more technique you have to learn how your body moves and therefore there's more risks uh, there's more risk there my dog's here distracting me i would show you but she's too low can i get a nose come up here Sash. come up up here up here no she's chilling all right we're looking after the pets this weekend me and Ellen. we've got um sasha and mia in the house so it's an exciting time. First time recording a pod with a dog in the vicinity. And naturally, dogs are the best. And naturally, therefore, very distracting. So I'm just going to stroke my dog while I continue with this great chat. Um, So yeah, if you... I would just... With regards, it's got to be fun. And you got to get good results. Because that way, you're going to keep coming back. And you're going to be excited about everything. And learning the movements with free weights, it takes a bit more time. You need a bit more guidance. You've got to put more effort in to yield the same kind of rewards, even if you can get the same kind of rewards. They're harder wins. Again, there's trade-offs for everything. So there is a benefit to learning those different movements. 
um, you put more in so you'll get more out with regards to the whole journey. But I would really just encourage you start on move start on machines just to get that momentum going. Even if it's just two to four weeks on machines, when you then go over to the free weights, you'll have a much better understanding of how it feels to get a muscle working in a certain movement pattern, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And again, I'm going to come back to this, but making training part of your identity. It's a win if you've got the weightlifting emoji in your Instagram bio. If you're telling everyone, oh, I'm getting to bed early, so I've got to get my session in tomorrow. Uh, can I get extra protein with that? These kinds of things. When you become an absolute lifting junkie or a training person, not just someone who goes to the gym, but like it's part of who you are. You're a vegetarian. You're the veg vegan equivalent of someone who lifts weights. That's who you want to be. You want to be telling everyone. That's what was so good about CrossFit. Everyone's running around. Oh, I'm a CrossFitter in the Instagram bio on your CV, like that kind of thing. It just makes you do it more and more and more. Identity is absolutely mahusive. I'm just going to pause for one second to let the dog out because I think that's what she's wanting now. Just give me a second. All right, dog's been allowed out. You see, I step outside for about 30 seconds and I'm glowing red. The ginger skin is um, vulnerable to that heat, the 18 degrees that it is today in England. Gorgeous weather. Love to see it. Um, so it's got to become part of who you are. That's huge. Make it fun. Choose things that lead to good results and do your best to become that person who lifts. Make it part of who you are. Um, now, those are kind of, yeah, vague -ish things that you can probably apply your own logic to and figure out but with regards to what an actual program should look like in the gym like day one I'm starting to train what do I do and this is where you can think about body parts or movement patterns is a nicer way I think to look at it um, for a variety of reasons for example if you get obsessed with oh I want big chest or a big bum and Think of it purely as an aesthetic goal, which is fair enough when you first start, fair enough. But you can hit those targets of building muscle with the also the idea of, all right, I'm going to get a performance goal at the same time. So in order to get bigger glutes, I'm going to do in a, I'm going to try and get a heavy two times body weight glute by a Stardiel, for example. Or to get a bigger chest, I'm going to try and bench press my body weight or half my body weight, or something along those lines. These kinds of performance goals that are really nice. Um, so you're stepping into the gym, you've got to hit all the movement patterns that your body can go through. Now, this is like, what is a movement pattern? What are you even talking about? Now, if you're a coach, you should know this. You've got like your squat, your knee dominant movement patterns. You want to send your thorax and your pelvis up and down like you're in an elevator. Destroy the quads. Those are the knee dominant muscles. You're also going to get glutes there. Um, you've got your hinges or your deadlift kind of patterns where you're going to take the hip musculature through full ranges of motion, develop those thick glutes and become a better person in general. You've got your pushing horizontal, your chest presses, your dumbbell bench, your barbell bench, your push-ups, that kind of stuff. Your vertical pushing overhead, so your strip press, push press with a dumbbell, machine uh, machine shoulder press, everything vertically, overhead, pushing, and then vice versa pulling. So we've got horizontal rowing, lat pull, um, sorry, lat pull down would be a vertical row, but this kind of movement, you've got your horizontal and vertical pushing and pulling motions, squat and a hinge. Those are kind of basics. Those are the foundation for everyone starting their lifting journey. Now, with regards to a few extra that I consider with all my clients and my own training, and I got this all from Pat Davidson, his textbook, great way of classifying things. I'll also do core, a pelvic bias and a thorax bias, depending on the outcome that I'm trying to change. So I use those type of exercises and movement patterns to create some mobility or challenge, again, the core musculature, abs, um, obliques, loads of little muscles in there. Throwing is another movement pattern that, again, I think is awesome, but people can feel a bit embarrassed when you're just starting out on your journey. So you don't have to throw a ball. 
but it's a nice human movement pattern that ticks a lot of boxes with regards to performance and life and things in general. Triple extension, which you could just call jumping, or uh, Olympic lifting goes into that category partly. Again, these are things you don't have to do, but yields a lot of great stuff. Locomotion, so your kind of a lot of your cardiovascular activity, running, cycling, swimming, um, getting outside on a walk, that kind of thing. Change of direction. So you're talking, I don't know if you saw that head to head side, it was very quick, but um, change of direction stuff, that was just me, sorry, moving my head quickly, Uh, change of direction, so this can be drills more for like an athletic population if you're looking to get better at things like tennis or any sport really that's not in a straight line, like sprinting, 100 meters, so change of direction stuff, and then I've got breathing down as well, so breathing's a big one, I'm a bit obsessed with it, that's the podcast that's done the worst, um, because most people think breathing is like breathing. What are you talking about? But the biomechanics of breathing, what's going on in the body, influences loads of systems. It influences all the systems in the body um, and can help, again, give you different movement options so therefore you can perform these movement patterns better, um, set you up nicely to produce a lot of force, create, excuse me, create a lot of internal pressure so you can apply a lot of force through the ground um yes loads of stuff from breathing help you relax if you've got a mental day so if you're new my main thing that I'm, i would suggest focusing on is just horizontal horizontal and vertical pushing and pulling a squat and a hinge now you can do all of these movements on a day Going to the gym once a week, if you've never gone, is you're going to get progress. It's going to be slower than twice or three times, but trust me, you can get reasonable progress. You're not going to blow anyone away. It's not going to be quickly in terms of like, you're not going to be completely different in three months. But if you go to the gym twice, three times a week and your programming styled, that's more than enough for most people to get ridiculous results if you're doing the right stuff and progressing it nicely over time. So, most important thing is adherence. Can you get in the gym? Can you get the job done? So, figure out how many days a week you can, you can train reliably. So, so many people, when I sit down with them, yeah, I'm going to train six days a week, seven days a week. Okay, so what do you do for a living? Yeah, I'm a consultant or I'm a lawyer. How many hours do you work? Oh, 100. <laughs> it's like, you're not going to train six days a week. You can't manage the total load of your life. It's mental. Um especially if you're like going out big social life all these other things you can't do everything commit to a number of days a week you can train reliably of course you'll have holidays and things like that but generally probably advising unless you're already doing a lot of movement two to three days a week is sufficient and awesome and you can build from that foundation two to three days is like your minimum effective number of days that you can get in the gym and get some good outcomes from training and then once you've got those days, organize the training around that. So two to three days a week, you're probably going to hit full body, different movement patterns. You could split those movement patterns up. You can get a push and a hinge day, a squat and a pull day. And that is just absolute dream if you've got two days. And then the third, you can just hit everything again. Um, so hitting each movement pattern, these four, well, six that I've kind of laid out, Hinge, squat, push, pull, vertical and horizontal. Once or twice a week when you're first getting going. And if you're doing that close to failure, a nice stimulative, challenging set, that is just absolute wonders for the noob in the gym. Um, So movement patterns once or twice a week and just figure out what the minimum effective dose is. You're not going to need a lot if you're doing the right stuff. Again, if you want a horizontal press, chest press, two to three sets each time you're in the gym so two so a total of four to six sets per week is sufficient to make really good progress if you're doing a nice hard each of those sets are nice and hard so warm-ups don't count these are really challenging sets where you're starting to grind out reps and then apply that to all the other movement patterns across the board if you're looking for like something like a squat a machine variant leg press is great or a hack squat Um, any of those things work wonders for you to figure out the movement pattern hinging is a little bit more spicy like there's not that many machines that you're going to hinge with 
Um, you could just pick up the barbell for a hinge if you want to learn that one. Or you can go and hit the hamstrings and glutes independently using different machines in the gym. Every different gym has different machines. Hip thrusts are quite straightforward, hard to do wrong. You can, of course, do them better or worse. But again, finding movements that are easy to tick these boxes that you can progress with week by week. So hitting each movement pattern once or twice a week and doing the minimum effective dose. So you're looking at like four sets per muscle group per week, four sets per movement pattern, all the way up to 20, probably max 20 per week, 20 to 30. Well, if you're a new, probably 20 max, but you don't need to do that at the start. You probably want to start at about six to 10 working sets per movement pattern per week and that is so sufficient to get awesome results if i just done something that similar that simple when i first started lifting and tick boxes with regards to technique which is why machine solves this issue because you don't really have to worry about technique you can just work hard um the results would have been significantly better you don't have to do that much in the gym to get amazing results but you do have to tick a couple of foundational boxes. And rather than diving into those super deeply, it's just like use a machine. Use something where you've got loads of support and you feel able to put a lot of force into that exercise and progress it over time. So what we went over today, why I started lifting and how you can do it better. So I started lifting for ego reasons. Uh, and my advice to you is like how you can do that better do it for you, make it become part of your identity, make it fun and do thing that gets good results so you can um, progress quickly and snowball from there. And I've talked a little bit about the best way to start your training journey and then once you've ticked these boxes for a few months, then you're starting to look at things like getting into throwing, triple extension, locomotion, these other things that can help really benefit training outcomes. Excellent. I hope you had a good time listening to the pod. Drop me a like. Hope you have a good day. Bye-bye.